Good morning, everybody. I'm going to give it a moment for everybody to join us. I know I'm a couple minutes early. If you're catching this right now, you're probably catching the replay. Awesome, I got one. Good morning. All right, got a couple of you. Awesome. Good morning, you guys. Hi, I know. No treat today, okay? Later. Lainey's looking at me really sadly. Good morning. Hi, guys. <laughs> awesome. So excited. I haven't done a Cricut video in a while. This is going to be my first Cricut video in like about a month. So I'm excited. I got my new camera stand, phone stand, whatever you want to call it. So I am able to move you guys all over the place. This is going to be awesome. Hi, Jess. Hi, Tammy. Hi, guys. <laughs> Awesome. Let me see what time we got. Still got a couple minutes. Hi, Sandra. Oh, awesome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Junk to Gems to Videos. <laughs> um, I do this really often. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm on here about three times a week. And the videos are completely free. Don't charge for any of it. You guys can kind of follow me along. I'll even post my schedule and um, the supply list on most of the stuff that you can make along with me. Um, or if you want to watch the videos and go back and do it later, you are more than welcome to. But yes, hopefully you enjoy this. Um, feel free to share. That's the only thing I ask for you guys to do is just to share since this is all free. I don't charge for it. So just make sure you share and spread the word about the page. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed today's video. Awesome. I got 13 of you. So awesome. All right. I did say 1030. So I'm going to get some stuff ready. And you guys kind of hang out for a second. And then we will get started. I was practicing how to do this earlier because I was like, ah, this is one of those things that I just kind of made up in my head. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this on Saturday. And then I'm like, do I know how to do this for Saturday? So I kind of had to teach myself because I haven't used my Cricut for like a couple like weeks. So I was like, I better um, just freshen up and like make sure I know what I'm doing for today. <laughs> Let's see. Awesome. You're welcome, Sandra. Hi, Lynn. Thank you. Good morning, Rita. Hi, Bonnie. Thank you guys for sharing. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys, so we'll go ahead and start. I'll just show you what I'm going to be up to today. So I needed some new welcome mats for my house. However, I mean, you can buy welcome mats pretty cheap, so it's not a money issue. It's just, eh, I like being crafty, and I like making my own stuff and making it match my house. So I decided, let me get my one I didn't do anything to yet. All right, so I decided that I was gonna go to Ollie's, wonderful Ollie's, as you guys can see, the little orange sticker down there. And I bought these really cute mats, and they're actually pretty good quality. You can also get, I originally bought some from the Dollar Tree, um, and that's what these are. So you can do them on either. These are from the Dollar Tree. These are only a dollar a piece. So these aren't as, you know, and they're not going to hold up as as well but if you just want something real cute for like spring and then you're just like oh I don't care what happens to it after that you can go to the Dollar Tree and buy one of these so any mat even Walmart has them I just like this one I thought it was nice so I'm gonna keep it for our new house um, but I'm making two of these one for the front door one for the back so I got these from Ollie's they're dirt cheap Walmart I'm sure has them for about the same price I think I paid $4.99 for this mat so, and it's pretty good quality. It has that rough, like, texture to it. So, that that is a nice mat. But these are from the Dollar Tree. Either one will work. Any mat will work. Okay? So, I am going to use these today. All right? And I did, I was going to paint and everything today, too. But I figured this video is more around Cricut and more around how to do stuff on Cricut than painting. So, I kind of prepped my first mat how I wanted it to look, and this one here I'm going to do later, okay? So I'm just going to stick that aside. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what I'm using today. 
So awesome. Thank you, Rita. Thank you guys for sharing. All right. So prepping my mat today was pretty much, I wanted to use white paint for the letters that I'm putting on here for the wording. So I'm, I'm not crazy about all black and I didn't want to be using all black and the detail around the mat was all black. So I'm like, okay, how can I make this match my light scale of colors? So I decided to take my wonderful little chip brush, okay? And I used some outdoor, this is oil-based latex paint, okay? Um, so this is the Rust-Oleum, it's pretty cheap. You can get it for like a couple bucks at Lowe's. Um, but this is pretty much, this is a very like durable paint because I wanted something that, you know, people were gonna be walking on this. Um, white probably isn't the smartest thing for people to be walking on it, but these mats are just to look cute. I know that they're not gonna last me forever. I could have used black on them, but black's not gonna show up as well. So I stuck with the Rust-Oleum, just pr protective enamel paint, okay? Um, and what I did, I'll place you guys down here, I'm moving you all over the place today. What I did was I got this paint, okay, and I did my awesome little dry brush on that with the chip brush that I normally do, just to bring that white around the rim of that instead of it being all black. So that way my wording on this mat will match the outside of this a little better. So I didn't drown it in white because I didn't want it all white, I wanted it to look rustic. And you guys know me, if you watch any of my videos on painting, you know how I do this. So, a um, little bit different with the oil-based paint, because chalk paint is usually what I do this with. However, chalk paint was not going to be durable enough for this. So, I had to use the outdoor um, oil-based paint, okay? So, this is going to hold up a lot better. It's going to adhere to this a lot better. Um, and I just did my little dry brush. Um, if you guys aren't sure how I did this, there's plenty of videos. If you watch any of my videos from the last couple weeks on refinishing anything, you'll learn how I did that dry brush on there. So you can go back. You're more than welcome. If this is your first time viewing, you're more than welcome to go back to some of those videos on my page. They're available to you to understand how I did this dry brush, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just lay my mat there. So it does have that white feature now, and it looks really rustic, okay? Okay. So what I'm going to put on here is just a big hello. I just wanted a simple big hello for a front door mat looking really cute, okay? So in order to do that, you guys can either, if you don't have a Cricut, this project is still doable. So don't feel just because you have a Cricut, I can't watch this video, I don't, um, it's not for me. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Michael's, you can go anywhere and get like a really cute stencil, okay? And you can make this also, okay? So if you don't have the Cricut, the next couple minutes of this video are going to be kind of like not for you, but afterwards I'll show you guys how to put that stencil on there and just paint this and make a cute mat for yourself, okay? So I'm going to turn you back over here, all right? So if you have a Cricut, this is a good video for you, cool, easy project to do. All right, so when I first did this, and I think it's even on my list on my, um, put this back here so I don't lose it. Um, I think it's on my like supply list for this week. However, when I went to try to do this today, I found out it wasn't going to work the way I thought it was going to. So I kind of had to use something else. So um, I love vinyls. I love that kind of stuff. I like making my own stencils. But this is a stencil that would not stick to this type of fabric or whatever you want to call it, mat, okay? Um, so I was having a really hard time using a vinyl stencil where I could just stick it on here, peel it off after I'm done and throw it away. And I think originally I had on there about using the cupboard liner, the sticky cupboard liner from the Dollar Tree. However, it would not stick on this and the stencil would have came out like crap. So. I kind of just got rid of that idea and I actually found, let me get my little roll, I found this. This is just regular plastic cupboard liner, okay? Literally plastic cupboard liner. So if you guys are making stencils on a Cricut and you don't want to go spend like $8 on a pack of a stencil sheet, don't do that. That's, that's like silly. <laughs> you can buy this. The plastic cupboard liner, I think I paid like $7.99 for a whole roll. I mean, this will make me like tons of stencils, okay? And big stencils too. I mean, you can make them as big as you want. So, um, I got this dirt sheet. This is from Ollie's, okay? 
Um, I'm sure Walmart, I'm sure anywhere that has any type of cupboard liner has this. This is the um, ribbed, it's called a cupboard liner. It does have those little notches on it. Um, if you get the plain one, that's fine too. Um, but just keep that in mind, you know, that that is going to kind of determine which way you put your stencil on and determine which way you're putting it on your Cricut cutout sheet too. So $7.99 cannot go wrong for a whole sheet, a whole big roll of stencil material. Like, hello, and it's reusable. This isn't just, you know, put on vinyl stencil that you tear off and you're done with. You can reuse this like so many times. So awesome, awesome way. Let's see here. Good morning, guys. Awesome. Joy, let's see. Love how you dry brush. Aw, oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, I decided I just kind of wanted to blend the white in with it a little bit more, that my words were going to be in white, so I had to kind of make it work a little bit, but I think it's going to look really, really cute. All right, guys. So I already cut my stencil to where I need it. I have my mat set up, but first I want to show you guys how I made my stencil. Um, Cricut doesn't really I've sat here maybe there's a way to do it I just haven't figured it out um, I had to sit here and kind of make my own stencil because if you look at letters and sayings on stencils the middle part of like the O is connected to the outer stencil if not that whole middle part of that O is not going to be there when you go to paint so that was like a big thing this morning. I'm glad I kind of got up and like went over everything with myself and I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> this is not a stencil. It's not a legit stencil because I'm missing the middle of my E and hello and O. Oh. And I'm like, I can't have that. I could technically draw it in there with paint, but it was like, no, if I'm teaching people how to do this, I need to know how to do it. So I taught myself this morning and I'm going to turn you guys down to the program here. This is Cricut. Okay. Um, so this is my little Cricut. Sorry guys, you're not going to see the whole entire screen because the way I have my phone and the way it works with Facebook. So kind of just bear with me here. Okay. So this is the Cricut. Okay. Program. I'm just going to go up here. Okay. Let me kind of move you back and forth here a little bit. I'm going to go up here to my little home thing. I'm going to try to make bigger motions so you guys can see where my little mouse is to that drop down box. I'm going to go to canvas. Okay, so I have my brand new canvas right now. Let me know if this is too bright for you guys, okay? I'm trying to, um, maybe if I turn my screen brightness down. I always have problems with this. It like never fails. Okay, there we go. So I have my blank canvas here, okay? So I'm going to go into Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, it's okay. Don't panic. You can um, do this on your Cricut. However, I had to use Photoshop for my font. So this, even if you just go into paint and you type something, it'll still work. Okay. So I'm just, just pretend like this is paint on your computer. The Photoshop has really nothing to do with this. This is just the way I, the program that I used. You can go into your paint, you just create a text and you type it in like I did here. Okay. And all I'm going to do is save this image as a JPEG. So I'm just going to go save as, and this is the same way paint works. This has nothing to do really with Photoshop. Like I said, it's just, you can go into paint, create a text, put a text in there and save it as an image. Okay. That's all you're doing. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to go to JPEG. Okay. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop. Okay. And I already saved it, but I'm going to do it again. So there we go. Um, and that's just just your font. So if you go into to paint and just type in whatever you want to type in, okay, you can it can be a, a sentence, it can be a saying, it can be anything. You just save it as an image. That's all you're doing, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, minimize that. I'll show you guys here in paint. That way maybe I'm not confusing you by using Photoshop. But if you have Photoshop, you understand what I'm saying. So... It's a little different here. Let me just grab my board here. I'm just going to um, type in paint. I'm going to go to the paint app. Everybody has this on their computer. Um, if you have Apple, it might be a little different. It might be something different. But all I'm going to do is create a text. Go into that little text. Click here. Okay. This isn't the font that I'm using. Well, actually, it's pretty close, <laughs> which is kind of funny. 
um, and then you're just going to make it as big as you want which bigger the better so let me see here there's my size thing okay oops that was really big apparently apparently I have my settings a little off here let's see all right so you're just creating a font all right you're just creating that so then there's my hello okay um, I'm just going to highlight it and crop it so it's a little bit closer and then you're just going to go to file save as JPEG okay this little blue image here with the clouds and then you're just going to save I'm just gonna name it something different something crazy there we go just so I don't mix it up with my other image okay and I'm gonna save it so that's the way to do it on paint it's the same way and Cricut does also have this but it does not work with making a stencil Okay, and I just want to throw that out there because you guys are probably thinking if you do have Cricut, you're like, this lady's crazy. You can go on Cricut and type text. You can, but it does not allow you to do what you need to do the way it cuts it out. Okay, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Let's see. Hi, Cheryl. Good morning. All right, so you already did your paint. You're done with that. I'm going to click out of that. It's saved as an image. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm back on my Cricut here. Okay, hopefully you guys can see all this. I always get nervous with this computer screen because I feel like I practice it and then it never comes out how no, it is. <laughs> Let's see. I don't want to turn it too bright. Okay. So right now, if you go to your upload, which is right here, okay, and you click on your upload. There we go. That's better. Now you guys can kind of see a little bit better. There we go. Okay. So you click on your upload. I already have it in here, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go to Upload Image, okay? I'm going to go to Browse, right there, and I'm going to click on my image here. This is the one I did in my paint, but I like this text better, so we're just going to go with this. Actually, you know what? I kind of like this. Let's go with this. So I'm going to use the one that I did in my paint. I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to go to Simple edit pretty much is what it is okay this is where you're taking the background out of an image so you're going to go to simple I'm going to click on that I'm going to go down here in this corner okay and I'm going to click continue all right move you guys back a little bit because you're not seeing my whole computer screen all right so I have my hello right here and this little tool up here if you guys can see it right there this is the select to pretty much take out what you don't want. So as a stencil, you have to think of this backwards. So if you do stuff with vinyl on the Cricut, you have to do the opposite, okay? Because the vinyl, you want the letters. The stencil, you want the background. So you're going to select the letters, and you're actually going to take those letters out of here if that makes sense okay let me see if I can I can't really zoom in on this let me see if I can just move you guys up a little further there we go so right now I am taking out those letters on there okay so we have those letters out I'm not taking out the middle of the letters I'm not taking out the background I'm leaving the background taking the letters out so now I'm going to hit the little continue down here in the corner and it's going to turn that black and it's going to have the letters cut out, which is what we want. All right. So I'm going to select this, the one with the cut. You don't want it as a print image because if you select the print, it's going to print it out on your printer and then expect you to cut it out. And that's not what we want. We just want to cut it out. So we're going to select the save as a cut image. You're going to save it. You're going to go over here. It's going to immediately take you back to your upload screen. Okay, you're going to select that. It'll highlight green and you're going to come down here and you're going to actually hit this insert image right here. Okay, and then it's going to insert the image on your canvas on your Cricut. Okay, so now I'm just going to size this. I'm going to make it pretty big. Okay, um, my mat, I think I was looking at like 15. I am using a long mat. So let's see, I'm going to go up to here to the size. All right, and I'm going to hit, actually, I'm gonna skip that for now. 
because it's easier for me to show you guys magnified. So I'm just going to make this really big. And there's going to be a little error thing that shows up over here on your on your little um, thing over here telling you you can't cut it out yet. If you guys look real close, there's a little error button. All right. It's just telling me that image is too big to cut, which is fine. I'm going to ignore that for now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, what I need is to make this, um, this middle of this E needs to be connected to the outside here. All right. Because if not, my Cricut is going to cut this out and then this E is going to be completely hollow and it's not going to have the center of the O or the center of the E because there's nothing connecting that holding that stencil together. So what I'm going to do is go over here to shapes and this is why you can't just use the text on Cricut because then you can't add this and it's not going to work right. It's just going to cut the letters out. So I'm going to go over here to the um, shapes. Okay. I'm going to just hit the square. And it brings up this little gray square, which is awesome. You can hit the unlock button and you're going to make that into, I'm going to actually move this image down here. Um, you're going to make that into a little strip. Okay. It doesn't have to be huge, just a decent sized strip. Okay. And then I'm going to actually make it pretty long. There we go. So I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to go over here. Right in your little column here, your little menu. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit duplicate four times. So I'm duplicating that little line four times because that's what I need it. Okay, I need four little lines. So now you're going to go down. I'm going to move one of those little lines. Oh, here, I'm going to select them all real quick, move them down further just so I can get all this on my screen. There we go. All right, so I'm going to select one little line at a time. And sometimes they're hard to select. All right, and then I'm going to kind of just stitch. Let's get you guys in so you can see a little bit more. There we go. So what I'm doing, let's see. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm stitching the middle of the E to the outside of the background. All right. So you can see my gray little line here and I'm just attaching that. I'm just going to add those. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, you can shape them if you want to. I keep it the same width. I just sometimes move the height. There we go. Oh, I'm looking at my my TV screen, so it's a little different for me. It's like further away. Um, okay, so there we go. I have my stitches there on my E. I'm going to actually move this around a little bit more. Kind of tilt it. Like I said, it doesn't really matter where you stick them. If it looks better somewhere, that's okay. There we go. That looks pretty good. Make this one a little bit longer. And it doesn't matter the length. You're, the only thing you're looking for is it going through the white part of that letter right now. Okay, you're stitching it together. Okay, so that one looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to go ahead on the O. I'm just going to move these down. I'm going to stitch the O together there. And you can add as many as you want. Less is better because you're not going to see it on the stencil and you don't have to touch it up as much. Okay. So I'm just going to rotate it. You just need it enough to hold that letter together. Okay. This one here is just bothering me. I just don't like where it's at. Okay. There we go. There's that one. I'm going to rotate this one a little bit. Okay. So. All those are stitching that together really well. All right, so it doesn't have to look beautiful. All right, you just want it to look half decent because you just, you got to remember you're not going to be painting where those little stitches are. You're going to go back and touch those up. So there's your hello. I'm going to highlight it all. I'm going to attach. Okay. And then I'm going to size it to where I need it. So I was thinking about 15, but this hello is a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to make it, let me measure here my mat again, just so I don't do it wrong. I think I have my stencil trimmed out to be about 16. So let me see where that's going to get me. All right. I'm going to make it a little bigger because the letters... I should have made this border a little bit smaller around here, so I'm just going to keep that in mind. So I'm going to make it about 20. 
Okay. So that'll be a 20 length. Let me see here. That's about good there. And I'm just going to kind of pull this up here on my scale. Look at my letters. That's going to give me about 12 on letters. So let's do a little bit bigger. Let's try if this will let me. We're going to just see here. We'll do 25. The mat goes to 24 or 26. So let me try 25. Yeah, it's not letting me go that big. Okay, let me see here. 25. Let's try. We're just going to keep playing with it. 24 is too big. 23. Twenty-two? Nope. Twenty-one. No. So it must be twenty. No, still won't let me do the twenty. Okay, let me see here. Let's see how small it'll actually let me go. Or big. Without it bringing up that little symbol. Okay. So that symbol's right about at... Seventeen. Alright, so that'll, that'll work. That should work okay. Um, that should bring that to a little, maybe about nine. I'm looking at my computer a little far away here. So let's see. Nine. That's a pretty decent size. I think it'll work okay. And I could even mess with this this way too. If I wanted it a little bit longer. We'll try that. Maybe we'll try that. That'll kind of help it a little bit. And it still looks good. It's not losing the shape of the letters. It's actually looking pretty good. So let me go back up here. Put this at 20. Oops. Totally did that wrong. Let's see here. Sorry, guys. Just hang out here with me for a second. As soon as you think you have stuff figured out, you don't. <laughs> 20. Okay. There we go. That got rid of that. And I'm just going to kind of test it until it gives me that little alarm symbol again. Right there it is. There we go. Okay. So that did make it a little bit longer. That made it a little bit past 12, which I think is a good size for this. I think it'll look really good. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and, and um, process that. Just drag us down just a tiny bit more. Keeping it at that. Okay. Still not giving me an alert, so that's good. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go ahead. We are ready now to cut, okay? So I'm gonna go up here in the corner and I'm going to hit the little make it button, okay? Now I don't need to mirror this or anything. It all looks good. It's just showing me on my mat. See, I should have made this border. I should have cut this closer to the hello. I just wasn't thinking because I didn't think I was going to use this <laughs> image, but I ended up liking it better. So that's okay, but it's still going to look good on the mat. So we're going to just use that. And um, what I'm going to do is I need to cut a piece of this plastic out as big as this is showing me. Uh, there is going to be a lot of extra that I should have thought about, but it's okay. I can still use it for a lot of other smaller stencils. So I'm not going to dispose of it. It'll still be usable. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll move you up here. Okay. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to move you up. I'm just going to kind of move some of my stuff here out of the way real quick. My table's not big enough for my project today, so I got a lot of moving back and forth. Let's see here. Good. Okay. I'll try to keep up on comments too. That's always a task for me. All right. So I'm getting my mat. This is the strong grip mat. Okay. I do need a strong grip for this. Um, and what I could do, honestly, I don't think it'll let me. I could probably use this piece so I'm not wasting any vinyl and just look at where my, um, points are on here. Let me see here. This is about five, a little bit before five and 18. So in between five and 18. Okay. Yeah, we'll be able to do this. Excellent. So I'm not going to cut a new piece of plastic. It's just not going to have the border around it, which is fine with me. So I am going to look and see how that ends. That is in between three and eight. So I'm just looking here. I'm just doing my quick measurements. 
All right, I think we're pretty good. Three and eight, awesome. This is plenty big enough. Scoot you guys down here to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I have my strong grip mat. Okay, this is the thing that's really, 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 really sticky. I just totally knocked my stool over behind me. Um, and then I have my plastic covered liner. Okay, the textured side is up. I tried it with the texture side down and mirroring my image, but the texture side would not grip to this mat. So I'm using the soft side and the textured side is going to be upright. Okay, my hello is going to be facing me. So I'm just going to smooth this down there. Don't mind my mat. My mat's pretty, it's used pretty well. So I, what I did was I just went, instead of cutting out a bigger piece of this where I was wasting the border around it, I just looked on my computer where my Cricut had it positioned on the mat and I just put where it's going to cut out on the mat. So fingers crossed that I positioned it right. If not, we'll go back and do it over again. So I'm going to go ahead, use my little squeegee and I'm going to go over this really, really well, making sure it's really on there, making sure none of those corners are going to come up because we don't want this sliding on the mat when the Cricut is cutting. So there's that. That is on there really well. Okay. If I, there's nothing bending, there's no corners sticking up. It's on there. Okay. I have pieces all over this from earlier trying this. So I'm going to make sure I don't have any other little pieces left. Okay, looks good. All right, guys. So that is on there now where it needs to be. It's positioned where that hello is going to cut out. Usually, I would just put it up here and let it cut out. But however, I didn't cut a big enough piece and I didn't do the border. So we're just going to do it this way. It'll still turn out good, hopefully. All right, so now back over to the computer and the Cricut machine. I'm going to angle you guys here so you can kind of see both. There we go. Okay, so now I have my Cricut all set up. Oh wait, hang on, I wanna select all this stuff first for you guys. All right, so I have all my stuff ready here. All right, this is showing where it's gonna come up on the mat. So all I did was position it in between the numbers that it was gonna cut out on, okay? So the grid actually helped me out a lot there. So I'm not gonna mirror my image or anything, I'm just gonna continue. So this is where it's going to ask me, after it loads here, um, what material I want to use okay and for this I am using I'm going to go to browse all materials I really wish you guys could see the whole entire screen okay browse all materials okay I am going to go to categories I'm going down to plastic and I'm just picking the plastic canvas choosing that done and I'm going to go to more, more pressure, all right? Because this is a pretty thick plastic. So it's telling me what blade I need, which is already in there. It's just your regular Cricut blade. And then it's telling me that it's ready. So I'm gonna go over here to my Cricut. And if you guys can see, it's a blinking at me. It's telling me, hey, I'm ready to cut. So I'm gonna load my little sheet into there, making sure all my plastic is on there really well. I'm gonna hit my little button that's telling me, blinking, saying I'm ready. I'm gonna let it go, and it's going to print that after I hit this little go button, the C. Okay, and I'll let you guys watch that while I get the rest of it. It's just going to print that out, or cut it out, I should say. Right now, it's just finding where it needs to be on the mat. So now it is cutting out the lettering, okay? So it'll take a couple minutes. It shouldn't be too, too long for that. It looks like I positioned it pretty well. It doesn't look like it's hanging off or cutting the mat at all. It's just cutting the plastic, so that's really good. Because 
because it's such a big word, like big letters, it's not going to take a whole lot um, to cut it. So that's always good. take even longer of course common sense on that one all right so i'm going to turn you guys back down here all right and i'm going to face you down here so you can see my mat all right so now what we got going on is just the cutout so i'm going to take this i'm going to peel it off of here i'm going to get rid of my cricket mat i don't need that anymore I'm going to shut my Cricut off so it doesn't overheat. It is pretty warm up here today, so I want to be careful with that. All right, so now this is kind of like a punch out, okay? Hopefully it'll work. It worked before. So I'm going to carefully take this out. Um, I noticed if you don't have a new blade, it, it doesn't cut it as well, and this blade's not as new. <laughs> so I'm ripping this out of here. If you need to use your X-Acto knife just to kind of cut it a little bit, you can. Okay. So I'm just going to take it out being very careful. I don't want to rip this. All right. I just want it to kind of break where that is. And um, I might have, hopefully I select selected more on that. I feel like I didn't. I feel like I left it at default. So that might be why. The last one kind of just popped out. Or it just might be my blade getting dull. That could be very that could be possible too. Alright, so there's the H. It's coming out pretty easily. I'm not fighting with it. It's popping out. And this did not cut the lines for some reason. Okay, well that didn't work too well. That kind of makes me mad. It worked on my last one. Okay, let me try this again. Let me cut a new piece. All right, and let me use my old design because I think maybe I didn't, I think I might have stopped it early or something. I didn't let it finish. That could have been my fault. Okay, so let me grab my mat. We're just gonna use my old design. Grab this back out. This is still usable. I'll still use it for something, so it's not a complete loss or anything. Uh, let me grab my little stuff here. And I'm just gonna cut another piece of this. And I'm just going to do my original, because I think what I did was I stopped this instead of letting it finish on its own, and I didn't realize. I thought it was completely done, and it was not. So that was my own fault. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this to 15, because that's what my old design was. That's what I do when I get off track, when I have everything figured out, and then I decide I want to do something different. <laughs> that's how I work. That's how my brain works. It's terrible. All right, so I'm just cutting a new piece here, which is nice knowing that I only spent $7 on this whole roll, so it's okay for mistakes. <laughs> it's not like you're wasting tons of money, so it, it does, it, that does help a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put the new piece on here. It's not perfectly cut, but it'll be, it'll work. Okay, I'm going to squeegee that on there, and I'm going to point you guys back down to my computer. I'm just going to redo this. I'm going to do my design that I had earlier. I just did not let that finish cutting. I totally like sped it up because I was like, oh, you guys don't need to watch all this. I don't need to be on here like a whole bunch showing you this, but I ruined it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to my canvas, okay? Yes, let's see. So I'm just going to X out of that. All right, so this here's the one I want. This is the one I had earlier. It's my backup, just in case something went wrong, just like it did. <laughs> so 
So I did this on the same way. Um, if you guys look really closely here, I'll zoom in on this a little bit. I did have, I do have the little lines here. Okay, so that is connecting just like I did everything else on the last one. All right, for some reason, I just did not let it print out the whole way. I thought it was done and it wasn't. So I'm going to go ahead and resize this one. I'm going to make it 15. My keyboard's over there. I'll actually make it 17 because of the edges a little bit. Enter. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out. But as you see, it's the same thing as what I did on the last one. I'm going to go to make it. I'm going to make sure that it's going to cut out exactly where I need it. And let's see, that's past six. So we're good there with the size. And this goes down to 17, which is actually too long. So let's go back. Cancel. My border isn't as big on this one. So we're just going to downsize a little bit. We're going to go to 15 because that is pretty quick or um, close to that. So we're going to go make it, make sure it lines up okay. Nope, oh, for some reason it didn't say the 15. Let's see. See, I could have done this like 24 times before I went live and it would have been fine. And then when I go live, it's like, nah, we're going to mess with you. <laughs> so it's the way it goes. All right, let's see. We are down 14, 15. It's a little past 15. We are good. That looks perfect. Good, good, good. Tiny bit past 15. The line is right there. All right, and I'm just lining it up on my mat. I want to make sure it's not going to cut anything off. It looks pretty good. I think we should be safe. All right, guys. So same thing. I'm just going to continue. Let's try this again for the second time. All right. So there's my cut. All right. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead, I just turned off my machine, so let me turn it back on. And we're going to go back over here to Cricut um, again, okay? A little Cricut machine. I'm squeegeeing this on here, just making sure it's really on there, really good. It looks good. Okay, so I'm just going to load this. Let's try it again. And I'm going to make sure all my stuff is selected on my computer. So I am selecting how I had it before. I'm just going to go to the plastic. I'll move you guys back down here. There we go. Plastic, okay, which is here. I'm going to plastic canvas, done. I'm hitting more pressure. All right, I'm going over to my machine, okay. Hitting the little start button telling it, hey, I'm ready to cut. So it's going to go ahead and cut for me. And what it's doing, I noticed on my last one, is it's actually cutting out the border too. So I think that's why it was taking longer. And when I saw that the hello was done, I thought it was finished. But it wasn't. It was actually going to go back and cut out those little lines. So we'll let this one completely finish on its own. I'm not going to stop it again. So I don't mess it up. That was user error <laughs> on that one definitely was all right so i'm just getting my mat and stuff ready while that's putting out i'll let you guys watch it something to watch instead of me getting ready over here all right good. I am using sponge brushes, um, you know, like with any stencil, I will be using a sponge brush. Good, good. Okay, while that's printing out, I'm going to go ahead and read my comments, because I know I have a couple of them and I haven't been able to look at my screen. All right, let's see. Awesome. Hi, guys. Hi, Kelly. Um, my puppy is feeling good. She's doing great. Um, if some of you haven't been watching, um, Lainey has been feeling sick. Um, and I took her to two vets. It took two vets, and nothing's wrong with her. They just think she ate something. Um, and she's feeling a lot better now. She's eating. She's drinking like she could, so or would, so that's awesome. Um, but, yeah, well, she's back to normal, which is makes me feel a lot better a lot better <laughs> all right guys so I am using sponge brushes oh, wonderful sponge brushes I am using the indoor outdoor 
okay, Rust-Oleum Protective Enamel Paint because I want this to be more durable. I don't want it just to be chalk paint. It'll rub off within days, okay? Um, and I never made one of these, so we're going to find out how long it lasts us. My stuff was just kind of bumbling up. It's catching on something. Okay, I think we're good now. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know how long this mat's going to last. It could last like a week and be done. I don't know. But we're going to try it. We're going to see what happens. I'll give you guys an update in a couple weeks from now and see where we're at. All right. So I did mix my paint up really well earlier, but I'm going to mix it now again. Just while we're waiting on that. And if you ordered a shirt, if I'm shipping you a shirt, you will be getting that soon. Very soon. Um, the Melman should be picking them up today. I was going to drop them off the other day, but because of all the riots and everything going on everywhere, uh, our downtown was a little crazy. I didn't bring anywhere. Um, but no, now that I know, they're actually down there today. So I'm staying clear. <laughs> so if you get your shirts a little late, I'm sorry. It's just, it's been, nothing's been really. <laughs> Good here. Alright, and he is done cutting, so we should be good. We go ahead. Awesome. We are good. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and lean you guys down towards the mat here. Okay, so you can kind of see. So this cut it out. After I let it go, it did it right. And it actually was more pressure. So as you can see, it's kind of just falling out now instead of being crazy like it was a couple minutes ago. This line is a little more wispy, so when I am stenciling this, I do have to be a little bit more careful. Like I should have probably added one here just to keep that together a little bit more, but when I stencil, I'll just have to hold it. Um, like I said, this is my first one that I've ever made, so hang in there with me. Don't judge me too much. All right, but the center of the E is now complete. It is in there, so that's good. It's literally like the stencils you would buy. You're just popping out all of those letters, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just cut better anyway. This one just looks better than the last one I did. I'm glad I redid it. So just going with it. Okay, so one second here. It did kind of bumble up on me here a little bit, but it looks like it cut everything out, okay? So that's... Whew, that's a good one. Okay, let's see here in the O. Same thing with the O. I'm just taking out the letter here. I can hold this up. You guys All right, so it left the center of the E in there. Okay, see how that's attached now? It's an actual stencil. You're not filling in the letter E, you know, and having issues. So that'll be good. So it does, what I've just learned now, it does cut out a border when you're doing that this way. So make sure you are leaving yourself a little bit more room because it did cut a border, which is fine. Um, actually, it's actually pretty good that it does that because in that way, you know, your stencil is 100% square. So that's a plus, And I didn't know that until just now when I broke that. Definitely broke that. Okay. It's okay though. Those still in there. So we're good. Take out my little explanation point here. It's going to take practice for these. This, like I said, is my first time doing a stencil. So this one might be a little rough until I actually get the hang of making them. But hey, everybody has to fail and learn, right? Okay, so that looks good there. Take out this little O here for the explanation point here. If it'll allow me. It's being kind of stubborn. All right, there we go. Oops, there we go. Okay, so that is complete. I'm gonna rip this off here on the outer piece. Not a lot of waste. If I would have measured it better and perfectly, it would have been a lot um, even. But it actually cuts this out really evenly. It actually cuts that box out. So that's actually really good. If I would have known that, I would have kind of made that a little bit better. Um, but that's perfect. So there's your stencil. If I would have went back, if I would remake this, I would add just a little attachment here, just like I did to the um, E and O. I would add a little attachment there as well, just because this is kind of flopping. That's the H. All right. So if you are making this, keep in mind, anything that's big and disconnected from the outer um, rim of your outer layer, I should say, or background of your stencil, that's where you want to connect it. So learn from my mistake. 
I would definitely connect that. Okay, but it's still going to work. 100% still going to work. So I'm actually really excited if you guys can't hear it in my voice. Because <laughs> I'm excited to see how this is going to look. All right, so I'm going to move you guys up. You kind of get like an overview of this, hopefully, maybe. There we go. Okay, so now I have my Hello ready. Okay, it's facing me. But I am going to actually turn it this way. Because if you think about it, this part is going to face your door okay so when people are walking up to your door you want it to be facing them so I'm gonna turn this just because I want it to face me it's just easier for me to see in position all right so I'm gonna just put it down there and I'm gonna get some tape hopefully the tape will stick we'll find out if it doesn't it doesn't not a big deal do, 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 do. All right, we're just going to use some duct tape because I have a feeling duct tape is going to work the best with this. Um, and I think this fabric, the the texture of this isn't going to really allow like regular painter's tape to stick. So what I'm doing now is just kind of positioning this. You can be really picky. I'm not going to be too picky because this is for me. So I'm just going to kind of measure from the letter about four there. About four there. I think we're pretty even. So there's okay. It actually looks really well on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape it down a little bit just to kind of position it, make sure it just stays. Like I said, this texture of this mat is not going to really let anything stick to it as far as sticky stuff like um, tape and stuff. So just you want to definitely hold it down as much as you can while you're painting. So there is my little stencil on my mat it's how you make stencils so now if you're watching this and you don't have a Cricut this is kind of the point where you can actually you know if you have a stencil at home or um if you're you can go buy one this is kind of the point where you want to watch <laughs> to learn how to do it yourself um without the Cricut so you're just taping that stencil down okay looks pretty good I'm gonna hold it as I go here um I'm gonna take these corners instead of that side just because of that H all right so I'm going to use very little, little bit of paint at a time because I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to actually take off my ring because I have a feeling my fingers are going to be sloppy mess with paint right now. So let me, if I can get my ring off, my fingers are swollen. Okay, there we go. So sponge brush, I'm using the small one. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting messages on my phone. There we go. Small sponge brush. I'm using this outdoor, indoor paint. Okay. And I'm just going to use a tiny, tiny bit. I'm not drowning it in the paint because I don't want to. I want to make sure it's not going to just go everywhere. So I'm going to let this kind of lay where it needs to lay. And I am going to focus on this part of the H. Because this is the part that actually I should have connected and I didn't. So we're just going to start there. I'm going to hold it as close as I can. And I'm just going to dab lightly. Okay? Okay. I'm not putting a lot of paint on there because of the texture of this mat. That paint is just going to seep and it's not going to look good. It's just going to go and spread into a big, like, blob. Okay? So very lightly. Getting a tiny bit more paint. Pressing exactly where I'm putting my brush. So this is a harder, harder textured thing to do this on. If you're using the Dollar Tree mat, it might actually be easier. Um, you're just getting a cheaper mat out of it, but that's completely up to you guys. Okay. So I'm just very, very easily, very easily going over this. All right, because I don't want it to go underneath that stencil, and with the texture of this mat, it could easily do that. And like I said, this is why the sticky stencils do not work on this, is because of the texture. I originally thought it was going to. It might work on the Dollar Tree mats, but it's definitely not going to work on this. And after I have this stencil on there, I can go back with a little brush and be really picky and just kind of go over the letters if I really wanted to. But as you can see, it is it is picking those up. It's not as crispy white as I want, but like I said, I'm going to go back over and just kind of touch up the middle of the letters with a brush, I think. Just because I'd rather have it light right this second than a big blob of a mess of paint on here and not be able to read what it says. So this is a project that's kind of 
a lot of a lot of particular stuff working and stuff okay all right so that looks good where that H is so I'm just going to go ahead and finish the rest of this H way down it's gonna be a little easier because the rest of this is actually together better is holding together better than that little loop on the H And you're just doing dabbing. You're not brushing back and forth. If you brush back and forth, you are going to get underneath that stencil and then you're going to just have, like I said, a blob. So dabbing is your key here. And I don't know if iron on vinyl or anything will work on here. I am doubting it because I'm having a hard time just with regular, um, whoops, put a little bit much paint there, um, with regular sticky, just regular vinyl um, for a stencil. So if you're thinking about ironing on vinyl for this, it's probably not going to work. Okay. And there's my H on there. Okay. And we're going to move to the E here. I'm focused, so I'll go back if, if you guys are commenting. I promise I'll read them. I'm just going to get my E. Smaller letters, easier to do here. Okay. There we go. Up and down motion, not, not dragging it, not spreading it, just dabbing it. And this stencil is reusable, so that's really cool. It'll be easier on a different surface. It's just tricky. Perfect there. Very good. Smaller letters are a little bit easier, especially the L's. There's not attachments, they're just simple. You don't want to dab at an angle, you're just dabbing straight up and down. There we go. And same with the O. Very good. And then the explanation point here. Oops, I definitely just got paint all over my mat there. I can probably rub it off. It'll probably come off. Just as a texture. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lift this up a little bit, make sure it looks okay. The paint shouldn't look smudge or anything because this sort of kind of just sips it in there. It's going to take it up. There's my little hello on there. I'm going to let this still dry before I put it away. And um, what I'm going to do now, because it is kind of really light on there, and over time it's going to lighten anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and be a little picky. I am going to get, seeing what size of paintbrush I want to use here, this one should work. Um, my paintbrush, okay, and get a little bit of paint on there. And I am just going to kind of touch it up, make it a little bit crispier, okay. You don't have to do this. I'm just being picky. I'm going to dab though because if I don't, the little wiry fabric here that's on here, the surface of it, it'll just spread. So using the dabbing motion. Down. You guys could even just paint on here. If you have good handwriting, go for it. I do not. <laughs> That's why you see me using stencils all the time. I do not have good handwriting. That is something I was not blessed with. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just highlight. Going into there. And that is getting brighter, so that's good. I'll use a smaller brush on that area. And that one. Okay. Looks good. 
And this paint's sinking into there really well, so that's good, too. Perfect. Do the rest of that E in there with a little more brush. Good. So all I'm doing is going back over what I just put on there stencil-wise just to bring it out a little bit more, make it a little bit um, more visible. Okay. All right. There we go. I'm going to go back with the tiny little brush here. And just get those um, real tiny little spots here, like the H here, the little wispy thing on the H. And like I said, just dabbing it. There we go. This little part of the H. And then the E. L's look pretty good, just that little tail on the L's need to be touched up a little bit. Good. And then the O, there is this little wispy thing here. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Alright, there's my little hello. I'll turn it towards you guys so you can see. Don't mind my little bit of paint here. Let me see if I can scrape it off. It is definitely durable. Okay. All right. So there's my little hello mat. Okay. It did turn out pretty good. All right. You got your little font on there. Um, you can easily put anything you want on these. You can put welcome. You can put anything. But it turned out pretty good for a DIY mat that only cost me $4.99. Some paint and, you know, a stencil. It turned out really, really cute. So I will take a picture of this and post it. But that is your little welcome Cricut mat, okay? That's how you do it on a Cricut. Um, if, like I said, if you don't have a Cricut, it's okay. You can still do this with a regular stencil, so don't get too sad over it, <laughs> okay? Um, but Walmart everywhere has, like, welcome stencils, I'm sure. But, yep, that is the mat. Woohoo! All done. Looks really cute. All right, guys, let me see. I'm facing up towards me now. There we go. Awesome. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. All right. So that's pretty much today's video. Um, so yeah, the cricket video. I <laughs> haven't done one for a while. It was nice. My little camera stand worked really well for this. Moving you guys back and forth between computer screen and project. It worked well. So um, I'll be doing more videos. I'm not quite sure what's going on for next week yet. My husband is finally coming home on Monday. He's been gone for a little over a month. So um, he's coming home. We're looking at a house and hopefully making a decision on it. So I don't know what my schedule is going to bring for the next couple weeks. So as soon as I find out, Monday we should know, maybe Tuesday, um, I will keep you guys up to date, okay? And as soon as I come out with a new schedule, I will let you guys know. You'll get it either in your email if you're, um, if you're signed up to get my emails or you can go on Facebook, on my Facebook page, and it should be at the top of the page. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for sharing and watching today. I really, really appreciate it. I am so blessed to have all of you guys, every single one of you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> all right, guys. Be safe and healthy, okay? Um, and I will see you guys hopefully next week sometime. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye.